architecton is a word that the Apostle Paul uses to describe himself. It simply means master builder. And if you like, that was his job description. Archi, meaning primary, first, top, or as ruler, or you might say superintendent. So the word architecton means highest, first, primary. So he himself described himself as a wise architecton or a wise master builder. Of course, speaking fundamentally, Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone of the church. And the Apostle Paul himself emphasized this emphatically in the book of Corinthians when he said, No other foundation can any man lay except Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. The scripture we have just read, the scripture which we have just seen from Isaiah, is a wonderful picture of how the Lord plants his church. It's an Old Testament picture, I know, but we can see in the Old Testament not only hints, but wonderful pictures, wonderful descriptions of the Lord's Church, even in the Old Testament. So when he says there, I have put my word in your mouth, you could say, well, he's talking to Jeremiah, but he's also talking to us, because the Word of God speaks to us individually today. I have put my word in your mouth that I might plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth in righteousness. And he also says, I have covered you in the shadow of my hand. Remember when Paul said to the Corinthian believers, I have begotten you through the gospel. In other words, through the preaching of the gospel, those people had been rebirthed spiritually, born into the kingdom of God, and spiritually planted in the heavens. Remember when Paul is writing to the Ephesian believers, he talks about them being seated in heavenly places in Christ, raised up together in him, and seated in heavenly places places. Jesus also said, every plant which my Father has not planted shall be plucked up. So those plants which the Father plants, they are for eternity. But every plant which the Father has not planted shall be plucked up. So the reason God put his words in his apostles' mouths, that they might plant the heavens. And he says, I have put my word in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand. 
So not only did he put his word in his servants' mouths, but also he covered them with the shadow of his hand. He protected them with his wonderful presence. In Acts 1 and verse 8 it says, You shall be clothed with power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so those apostles were clothed with power. Not only did they have the word of God in their mouths, but they were clothed, they were covered with the shadow of his hand. And these two things, in order that he might plant the heavens. So in order for a true foundation to be laid, it has to be the word of God from the mouths of his servants. It has to be the power of the Most High overshadowing. And I have covered thee in the shadow of my hands. And it also has to be then that the heavens will be planted when the word goes forth. And then the foundation of the, and the earth laid in righteousness. How wonderful that it is. Have you noticed how it begins in the heavens first? How Jesus came down from the glory of heaven. The incarnation in the babe in Bethlehem. The angels singing in heaven bringing good news upon the earth. God's purposes begin in heaven. In his counsel and wisdom. And then he brings them to pass on the earth in his perfect time. When we see these things, how wonderful it is that we can praise God. We even say, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and yet this body is only a temple of God's presence, of the Spirit of the living God. Then we read again in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, I have laid thy foundations with sapphires, and all thy borders of pleasant stones, thy windows of agates, gates of carbuncles. And so we see that the giftings of God are likened to precious stones, and this is the building of God's church, which then is more wonderfully <laughs> explained and shown by the time we get to Revelation chapter 21, a glorious vision of the bride descending out of heaven, clothed with the glory of God, shining with Christ's light. But that's to jump a little bit ahead of ourselves. So now we can look and see. Once the foundation is laid, no other foundation can be laid. What did Peter say when Jesus asked the disciples at the foot of, was it Mount Hermon? And he said, who do men say that I am? One of them said, oh, John the Baptist, you're Elijah. And Peter said, thou art Christ, the Son, the Son of the living God. God. And Jesus said, Bless you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And upon this rock I shall build of me my church, the rock of the revelation of who Jesus Christ of Nazareth is, the Son of the living God, the first fundamental illumination to the soul of a man or woman. Jesus is the Messiah. And then the great transformation when the Spirit of God comes and births the soul to a new creation in Christ. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. So this is the fundamental. There has to be correct foundations. Going back to Isaiah chapter 54. I will lay your foundations with sapphires or sapphire. 
Sapphire speaks of righteousness, the blue righteousness of the living God. And Jesus Christ is our righteousness, is accounted to us. It's not our righteousness, but he is our righteousness. And we see the very foundation that has to be laid first of all. He said, I will build of me my church. He himself, the righteous one, became the chief cornerstone of the entire building of the church. There are many such scriptures that we can find for that. But now we will unfold to the very fundamental doctrine of the foundation of the Church of Jesus Christ. One thing we must get clear in our mind. There are many names that people have names, different groups and so on for being the Church. We hear of the Church of England, the Church of Scotland, the Church of Wales and so on, Church of India. But I do not believe this is the true locality of the church. Just flick through to the book of Thessalonians and you'll find there, this is how Paul describes the church. Here is a sentence that is very precise. Not the Church of England, or the Church of Wales, or the Church of Rome, or the Church of Constantinople. The Church of God. See, the Church is holy of God. It was God the Father's plan from the beginning to have a people. From the very beginning, before he even made the very first star. 